Welcome to this, the tenth uh, in the series of my introductions to the basic ideas of Marx and Marxism. Uh, this one uh, is going to deal with uh, Marx's theory of the tendency of the rate of profit to decline, which was developed in volume three of his masterwork, Capital. Uh, Marx believed that a capitalist economy uh, would always be prone to recurring economic crises, uh, i.e. recessions and slumps uh, in which production would fall, businesses would collapse, uh, and masses of people would be made unemployed. Uh, now, Marx has been proven right about this, as against all sorts of mainstream economists who always hope that uh, um, having learned the lessons of the last slump, that the current boom will go on forever. Not so. And uh, the most obvious examples of this have been uh, the Great Depression of the 1930s, the recessions of the mid-70s and 80s, uh, the Great Recession of 2008, uh, and uh, the current recession, um, whose scale we don't yet know, but it looks to be massive, that has been uh, triggered by uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the theory of the tendency of the rate of profit to decline is that the heart of Marx's explanation of why capitalism is prone to recurring crises and why, as the system uh, ages, um, these crises will tend to get deeper. Profit, of course, is the motive force of production under capitalism. If the rate of profit declines substantially, capitalists will tend to stop investing and the whole system will become more unstable, more prone to shocks, more likely to uh, seize up, as uh, we know is happening uh, uh, at the moment in response to COVID. Um, but obviously any talk of declining rates of profit um, invites really an obvious objection, an immediate objection, which is that uh, um, rich and the billionaires have never been so rich as they are today. How is it possible to suggest that profit rates are declining when Jeff Bezos is almost a trillionaire, uh, uh, when the world's eight richest people um, have as much wealth as the bottom half of the world's population, when the giant Apple Corporation announces quarterly profits of $87 billion and, and so on. I mean, we're all familiar with these kind of uh, examples. But here it's important to understand that Mar what Marx is talking about is not the absolute mass of profits, but the rate of profit. And by the rate of profit, he means that those profits in proportion to the total outlay of the capitalist, their outlay on uh, machinery, raw materials, wages, and, uh, 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 and so on. Uh, and if the outlay incre increases sufficiently, then even though the mass of profits uh, uh, is increasing, the rate of profit can simultaneously um, decline. And this is what Marx says uh, will tend to happen under capitalist production. Uh, Competition between capitalist economies will lead each, or uh, uh, capitalist companies, um, will lead each of them to uh, increase their outlay on machinery and raw materials in comparison to their outlay on wages. And they will do this in order to increase their share of the market and their share, therefore, of the total profits. But in the process of each capitalist company struggling to increase its own profits, right, uh, the overall rate of profit will decline. Now, um, Marx explains this process, illustrates it with a series of e equations that I will show you. Uh, first of all, he uses the following symbols. P is equal to the rate of profit. The rate of profit is represented by P. Surplus value, which is the basis of profit, and is extracted from the labour of workers, is S. 
outlay, constant capital, spending on machinery, raw materials, infrastructure, etc., is called C, constant capital. And variable capital spend expenditure on wages is called V. This then gives the equation for the rate of profit. The rate of profit is equal to S divided by C plus V. Okay, so that's the rate of profit is equal to S, the surplus value, divided by C for constant capital plus V for wages. Denmark, Denmark inserts values for P, uh, S, C and V. So we start with the top the rate of profit with the values of 50, 50 and 50, 50 for S surplus value, 50 uh, for C uh, and 50 for V. Right, this gives you a rate of exploitation between S and C, the rate of extraction of surplus value uh, uh, of uh, uh, 100%. And this then gives you a rate of profit of 50%. As the, as the capitalist uh, economy grows, so we have an increased expenditure on uh, C and V uh, and an increased profit here. Here he gives the, the, the figures of uh, 60, 60 and 100. And then you find there that the rate of, of profit has gone to 37.5. The economy uh, expands, the capitalist economy expands further. Then we get 80 S over 160 plus 80, 33 percent. And then we get uh, P rate of profit equals 100. Over 300 plus 100 equals 25 percent. This shows how it is possible for the total mass of profits to be increasing. That's from 50 to 60 to 80 to 100, while the rate of profit declines from 50 percent to 25 uh, uh, percent through that process. Now, uh, Marx believed that, in simplified terms of course, but that that tendency existed actually in capitalist production. The capitalist production would tend to develop uh, in that way in, in reality. So Toyota, for example, will invest in new machinery because it will give them an advantage over their competitors. Volkswagen, uh, say Volkswagen and Hyundai, but then Volkswagen and Hyundai will introduce similar machinery and the overall rate of profit will tend to fall. The word tend is very important here. Marx is explicit that what he's talking about is a permanent tendency, not a continuous straightforward descent. And he specifies that there are major counteracting tendencies uh, uh, at work that will tend to halt the, the, the decline of the rate of profit. Um, one of the main ones of these is a, a, a rise in the rate of exploitation, that is in the ratio of S um, uh, to, to V. Uh, and that uh, rate of exploitation can be increased by uh, making workers work longer hours, by increasing the intensity of their work, or, or by cutting their wages. Uh, uh, another counteracting tendency may come through foreign trade and the export of capital from air, which will uh, decrease the ratio between constant capital and, uh, uh, and variable capital uh, by sending capital abroad to areas where the rate of profit uh, uh, is, is much higher. Um, Lenin believed that this was a major counteracting tendency which well, explained, uh, was one of the main explanations for the rise of imperialism and the development of the imperialist epoch at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century. 
To these counteracting tendencies, we could now add uh, the role of massive arms spending, uh, which siphoned capital off into a kind of dead end and helped sustain the long boom uh, uh, after World War II. However, Marx believed that in the long run, the tendency of the rate of profit to decline would assert itself uh, and lay the foundation for uh, uh, recurring and deepening uh, economic crises. I will conclude by saying that the declining rate of profit has always been controversial among economists, but in recent years it has been strongly defended uh, by the Marxist economist Michael Roberts, um, uh, particularly in his blog The Next Recession, uh, and he has also compiled a mass of data showing that there actually has been uh, empirically a um, major fall in the rate of profit uh, in recent decades. The fundamental point, though, is that for Marx, the decline, the tendency of the rate of profit to decline demonstrates that capitalism, far from being uh, an eternal system, is historically limited and contains the seeds of its own destruction.